taking its time. Oh, good. We are now on air. We are live. The September 5th, 2014 Falcon Expense Demo Hangout. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. We have some new people with us today. We have, let's introduce James first. James, is this your first hangout with us? No, I've been on there before. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and we also have Brooke, and she is with Falcon Expenses, and will be giving us our demo today. Great. Hi, everybody. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> so who has the experience of having a hard time getting expense receipts from their clients? <laughs> 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 Absolutely. In the olden days, I would send these plastic folders with my client. Please, every time you get an expense receipt, put it in the folder and hope I would get it back. Most of the times I did not. <laughs> so Brooke is going to show us a, a nifty little app for the iPhone that will help take care of that problem. Brooke, do you want to talk to us about that? Sure. Thanks, Gina, for the introduction. So my name is Brooke Sugarman, and I'm the founder and CEO of Falcon Expenses, and we've created a mobile solution for expense capture and expense reporting to alleviate the pain that both your clients and your experiencing when capturing and gathering expenses. With Falcon Expenses, you can uh, scan receipts, and we'll enter merchant name, date, and amount, and amount. Um, if you want, you can manually enter the receipt data in. You can also log time, uh, billable hours. Uh, we have an integrated timer for that. And probably the most popular features that we offer right now are the mileage tracking features. And we allow users to track mileage in three different ways. One being with the GPS. You can automatically track it as you're driving so you never forget. The other is by entering the start and ending odometer readings, and then the last one is um, addresses. So let's say they forget um, and they want a quick way of determining how far they've dr driven for the mileage expenses. You enter the starting and ending address of the destination, and we will calculate that based on the mileage expense reimbursement rate. All expenses can be prepared into a report and organized and emailed from your phone into and then sent in a PDF and or spreadsheet format. Um, this can be easily imported into other systems. So that's kind of where it is. And our vision really is to create a fully mobile solution to um, empower those on the go and to also um, kind of how this app was created was I used to travel a lot for work and I really, really did not like typing the data in and entering my receipts and scanning that data in. And I used to work at Canon where we used technologies like optical character recognition and automated these processes. So I tried to merge those two, that experience with that pain point, and create this solution. So does anybody have any questions before I begin the demo? Or is there any other intro? What want kind to of ask? format? You said it was a text format, but I mean, how is it laid out for the mileage? So I can... I have an example I can show you in the demo. I was going to go through the expense capture and then the report creation and then the export. But I do know for you guys the most important part is how it's presented at the end. <laughs> so we could start yeah, there. How, how am I going to look at the IRS agent and say, here, look at this? Yeah. So the, my, the export is um, it's a CSV file, which I think would be the most useful for the accountants. Um, and it's sort of... Yeah. Uh, show it to you right now. We can start with the export and then work our way through the features of that. Well, well before we get on to that, um, I had asked you bef um, before we had started, do you work with Android and iPhone? And do you want to answer that? Yes. So this was the first, this is our first major release and it's just an iPhone app. And we've received a lot of good reviews. About.com has rated us in the top expense and time tracking apps for 2013 and so we'll be growing out into Android and integrating more intimately with the accounting software companies such as Zero and QuickBooks um, and FreshBooks possibly. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 
So right now it's just iPhone and everything's exported into a file format. Okay. There would be a there will be a web portion, but our, again our vision is fully mobile, so and universal. So we like empowering people to do everything on the phone. Great. So let's start with our reports. What we get. What you see is what you get. No way. This is this is an answer to your question, Bruce. I know. We're starting at the back end. I apologize. I'm this is how accountants do. You want to see the reports first. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting, Yvette, did you get your problem solved? Yes. So do you guys see my screen? Yes. Do you? Okay. So I'm going to show you the CSV um, report first. Um. This is I just made this report. So why, why is the I and I, maybe this isn't true for anyone else's, but somehow on mine the whole top of my screen is with the status bar of Google, the 626 night mark. Oh I know, I got it. I hit a key on the keyboard. Okay. Now okay. I see. You're making it a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. You see it? Yes. Very nice. Much this, perfect. Yeah. This, so this is a, so we have. Um, you know, I just created this today. This is kind of how it. Ex, this is how it exports. I'll show you. All right. And, it, and so is this a weekly report that you would get then? The, However, your you instruct or your client prepares it, they can do it weekly. They can add expenses, just Got mileage it. or just time, depending on their needs. So we we divided up expenses, hours, and mileage. So you have date. So if you go here, you have the date for the cash expenses, the amount, the merchant, and the category. You have comments. And this helps you associate the receipt image with the actual line item. So you actually get the receipt image with it too. Yeah, with the CSV export, it comes attached separately. With the PDF, you get four receipt images per page. Does that make you happy, Bruce? Uh, uh I'm I'm concerned that it's grouped into one big report instead of three separate reports. So it would be hard to bring into QuickBooks that way. You'd have to data enter it with keyboard entry, right? You could you could just so this is showing you ever all the capabilities. So to your point there, you could just create a report that just contains mileage expenses. And when I show okay. you the okay. software, you'll see what I mean. Okay. okay, got it. Yeah, you. Some of your clients might only need it for mileage expenses. Others might have billable hours. Others might have cash or a combination. But you can have your client create a report that's cash expenses for the month, mileage expenses for the month. However, you want them to create the report. Got it. Yeah. And Linda, at this point, it is still manual and manual entry into QuickBooks until they figure out how to do the sync. And you had mentioned you're working towards QuickBooks, Zero, and possibly FreshBooks. Yeah, those are the three we would integrate with. You can do like there's different levels of integration. You could upload it from a CSV file, or we would do it like other like other software companies where you map the chart of accounts over and it sort of configures how you want it imported. Right. You can yeah. imagine you could use a Transaction Pro importer also. Or a batch entry. Or a batch entry. Yeah. Yes. That would be nice to figure out a way to do a batch entry. It's easy. You know, you just got to set it up on QuickBooks. The batch I'm entry. Sure the columns are the same. Yeah. Right. See, and all you have to do is copy and paste. Mm -hmm. Do that all 
Great. Yeah. yeah, if we can separate those reports, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Bruce. Really? You want to just I have a comment, here? and I, I don't know whether it's relevant, but I don't like to see dates formatted that way. I like to have it be 0, 3, either dash or slash 12. Well, and it's in Excel. Seven. Just change the format, Linda. Well, that's true. <laughs> I think, I think someone mentioned that. We were working on that. So this export, if you guys have any feedback, you can email me um, at bshugerman at falconexpenses.com and I can have the, like we can modify. I know this is probably the most important part for your purposes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like it, definitely the accountants have the most, they critique this the most, this part. So see, we have... See, Gina. <laughs> so this is the, yeah this is the export you can separate those out um, you have categories your clients can create custom categories from the phone they can tag it so you have all sorts of different ways to organize and make it easier to sort and filter through the data to serve the accounting purposes that your or goals you're trying to achieve Category tag and then this receipt image. So, just to give you, is there any other questions regarding the CSV export? I have some, but I want you to finish because I think you'll answer them. Oh, with this one, um, well, there's the name. That's the date of the uh, of the expenses in the report. This is the date it was submitted. Let, let's play. Let's play with the app. Now. Yeah. Okay. You want to see the app? All right, let's do it. <laughs> so here's the app. Um, I can show you. You're seeing. Is it? You see it switching oh, yeah. around? Okay. Ooh. So this is Falcon Expenses, and this is the main what what we call the capture screen. Um, on the, you can start here, or you can set it to start on the expenses list or report. So from here, you can scan a receipt. That top one is where we manually. We type it for you. Then the next one is where you enter it yourself. And track mileage is where you have the three different mileage tracking capabilities. Oh, addresses. Got it. Yeah. Wow. And here's the awesome. time. like that little feature. Perfect. Oh, that's nice. Very simple, very easy. Yeah, it does look really intuitive. Like you could just say to a client, Go install this on your Apple, and they right. can take it from there. Right. Okay. So this is the settings. I'll go through that later. Let's do a, a scan receipt. So you see what I did here? I tapped scan receipt. Now I have a receipt here. And I'm just going to take a picture of it. And from here, you can add it to a report if you wanted to. You can add a category, post food. You can tag it. We're not going to tag it. Let's say lunch with the team. And we'll send it for scanning. And you can see that this um, now it's showing its processing. So we're going to process the receipt. Um. So back on the report, and I'm watching this. How do you? How does it determine what receipt number it is? I noticed it was going by date one, two, three, four, five. So it gives the receipt the way the nomenclature that we used was. It's basically it gives the date, and then if there's more than one receipt for that date, it'll be a dash one like a dash two. You see what I'm saying? So it's okay, and there's no way to change that the format? The date of the expense is the way the receipt is labeled. You want to put a name on the expense? Is that what you're looking to do, Bruce? No. Uh, because of the way it's doing it, my clients are, and, and I'm not trying to belittle my clients at all, but now they're going to have to write a matching number to this receipt. And and what do you mean by that? I don't think they will. 
Well, if she takes a picture of 100 receipts and I need receipt number 75, do I have to go through all 100 of those receipts to find number 75, or can I thumb through it until I find number 75? So they're going to have to write on the receipts. Yeah, but it's attached on the report. Yeah, you don't. They, they can throw the receipts away. Uh, if it's <laughs> over seventy-five dollars, I wouldn't do that. Oh, so it's now seventy-five. <laughs> it's always been seventy-five. Okay. <clears throat> so, so if, are you telling me that all of my receipts that I scan and throw away are not valid? That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. I have a question. The question is this. If those receipts are going to show up on an American Express credit card statement or a Chase credit card statement or another independent third party, do I have to have a picture of the receipt? Bruce, the tax expert, I'm going to let I, you answer. I, I was multitasking. Well, I'm sorry, Linda. Can you ask me that again? <laughs> I said if I have... I spent something $75 on something or more and it's that actually is not I didn't pay cash for it I did it on an American Express card or a Chase credit card or someplace where I'll get a statement I then don't need the receipt do I if I have an independent third party uh, if it's over $75 it's highly recommended that you have the receipt because if you get audited the IRS is not going to accept a list off of your credit card statement yeah, oh, okay. Very but good. If you have this report, then you should be so able to bring it right up, right, attached to, um, or how hard would it be to bring the picture, the scanned receipt into QuickBooks? You, you need the image in there. The images would be sent in a separate file. Okay. Yeah, in 2014, you can attach documents in the document center to a client. So if it's a PDF, you just... Okay, uh, so... Well, oh, sorry, go on. No, 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 in QuickBooks, you, if you have the PDF of, a, of the photo of the, the receipt, you can attach it to that client yeah, in QuickBooks. That transaction as well. And, that, and you can do it right to the transaction. The only thing is you need a method of transferring it from the phone to QuickBooks. Correct. So you can either, because the, the document center, QuickBooks. the documents, and if you're saving the document and it has the PDFs attached, you can actually load the entire file into the document center. Hmm, that's, that's, what been, that's what I've been doing. That would work, Misha. Because what you're saying is when you're doing, we'll say the, from the report that you have, you're going to write out a check um, for those expenses to whomever. And then you're going to, going to attach that whole file, that whole CVS file or CSV file um, to that check. Would you be able to go into that and, and click on the scan documents and open up the documents from there? In QuickBooks? In QuickBooks, yes. Yeah, you can access once. I haven't loaded um, Excel files, but the PDFs work perfectly. Once you attach it. Excel, um, Brooke, how does the, the images come through on your report? Me? Oh, you're asking about the attached ones. Right, right. They're individually attached. I mean, um, so we're kind of all over the place with you. We can come back to that. They're 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 um they're image files. You have to upload them one by one. But when we do the integration, um, we've looked into the APIs, into the accounting software companies. You can actually um, map the images into the accounting software. Nice. You do that. You guys, that's what you're talking about. You currently do that today, or do you just keep them on record? I don't dump them in QuickBooks. QuickBooks has enough issues. So what do you do with the images right now? I save it to my client's file. Oh, you just have a big folder, like a Dropbox or something like well, that. It's, it's actually a portal that my client has access to should they need to right. go back and 
get so the garage what door repaired. You then would be to to upload that file to your portal. Correct. You have images of every receipt. Correct. So you could access that directly from. Images, depending on the email client you're using, come in a folder, or you just take those images and put them in that folder. So we're we they're all in one email. I'm not able to open my other software now. Working fine. Welcome to Google Hangouts. <laughs> yeah. I can't seem to get to, I guess if I close this. Let me get through the demo and then I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, it changes and sometimes it was. Okay. So if you see here, we scan these receipts, and you can see up here, I did two. Um, the data was entered. This was actually from a test earlier. But these two were just now, so it was sent in for processing. And you can look, and you can see the image here. And if the client or you wants to edit it, you can do that here. You can, this one I didn't categorize. You can categorize it, add it to a report. So what information comes in automatically when you scan the receipt? You get the merchant name, the date, this, the date, and the amount. That's awesome. Yeah. It's information that you do not have to type in. So you really, all you need to do is yes, make sure you great. get the correct category. Yep. So you can also, instead of scanning, you can manually do it, which the experience looks is the same as what I just showed you. Mm -hmm. So you're manually entering it, and you have the image here, and so you enter, you can go start with the amount. Twenty-seven point three seven comment, lunch with team. Let's say. Um, the merchant is D'Angelo. So D'Agostino's, it's a, I think it's a grocery store around here. So I'll show you here one of the things that we do that's um, pretty different from a lot of others and apps on the market. We can create custom categories from the phone. So let's just say this is groceries. Let's pick <laughs> meals and entertainment. That's more of a business than groceries. Yeah, we could do, I guess we could do that, meals and entertainment. We can delete categories too. Oh, that's awesome. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to show you what to do if you made a mistake. No, no, I'm just showing you um, <laughs> meals and entertainment. So you can do that. Uh, same with tags. You can create a custom tag. Client A. So from there we can save it. So we have the expense, it's again it's this expense right here. The next thing that we can do, so the next we'll go over is the tracking mileage, because I think this is the most popular and definitely um, people are most interested in. It's most generally the first thing the IRS will audit your return on. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Mileage. Yep. Since your phone, like this way, your clients never forget to keep track of their mileage. They don't have to have a paper log, and they if they forget, they're not as likely to forget where they went. So here we have the automated way to do it. You hit start on the GPS tracker. It locate. This is where I'm located right now. I'm in Manhattan. I'm not moving, so <laughs> it's stop. It's just going to be the same spot. <laughs> so that would be the start and end address. We didn't really travel, so there's no miles or right. expense. But you also can enter parking, sure. Calls, comment, drive to clients, office. That's great. Yeah, I'm loving this. <laughs> and I'm thinking that, that clients would be happy to do this. Right. Yeah. So then, and we're going to actually, the roadmap for this feature is to automatically turn the GPS on once they're moving over certain speeds so they never even have to remember to hit the start button. 
Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, because I think the biggest pain point here is I forgot to write down where I went. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So I'll show you another feature that sort of really alleviates a lot of the pain associated with forgetting. Um, but this one will be, you'll never forget again. <laughs> so that's sort of the solution there. So you save it. Oh, it doesn't, oh no, the mileage, miles actually have to be greater than zero for it to save it. <laughs> Smart. So, so that's GPS. Do anybody have any questions on that? Got it. No. Okay. So, so that GPS does that come from another app that's inside the Apple phone that's built in? The GP we utilize GPS technology that's a part of the phone's current technology. So GPS is the phone's capable of GPS tracking, and we take advantage of the GPS tracking and we use it yeah. for expense capturing purposes. I was just in my Android phone. I have like three or four different GPS apps, so. Yeah. They so all, iPhone, it's just built in. Yeah, they all use the, yeah, the phone's thing. location services. That's, that's why mileage tracking with mobile, the two combined for it, uh, solve a lot of pain because you weren't able to do that before, really. So we have, if, you're, if you want your clients to change, the mileage rate can actually be changed here. It's default to the IRS rate, so that they can change it to whatever they want here. Oh. And the billable hours, that's in the settings. So also from track mileage, I'll show you this one. This is, the addresses feature is in the event that you do forget, um, enter the start and address and the address is calculated. Got it. And this one is user friendly. Um, start with your current location. And it remembers the addresses that you enter. So if your clients are constantly going to and from areas and you really just need a list, like that export that I showed you. Let's go to the airport. Uh, oh, you've got a Hawaiian airport in New York. What's that? Your Keohoe Airport, that's actually the airport in Kailua Kona on the Big Island. Oh. This is a road in New York. <laughs> yeah. So, well, this is, this is our demo data. <laughs> I, I, we don't drive very much in New York City, so it was hard. I had to, like, we had to brainstorm how to come up with the different spots. <laughs> so, that, would, so here you always have a reminder of the rate. And very nice. Just for the, you, you, I, very nice. You used to be able to drag and drop the pins. Not right now. I think that. No. So now we up on details. <laughs> Same thing. You enter the parking and the toll. Comment at the airport. And you have your categories. Default on transportation or whatever they need to do. Let's say there's a project code. Um, you can create a tag project. One, two, three. Um, then you can add it to the report right from here or later we can add it to the report. So that's sort of how addresses work. That one, the addresses is actually, that one's a really popular feature, especially at the end of tax season. Uh, last year, people, I think, were around tax season, they were catching up. <laughs> Absolutely. There are hundreds and hundreds of these expenses being entered through that feature. So, so if I make a hundred trips to the airport, does it group all those airport trips together? We're getting a little bit of echo. I'm not sure what's happening. You want to try again, Bruce? Does it group trips to the same place together, or is it unit by date? So to group them, okay. So I'm back on the report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's many ways you can do this. So I'm gonna. Okay. So as everybody see here, I created. I, I create a report from here. I create a report. Demo report. Let's call it. Give it a reason. Um, if Bruce is nosy. <laughs> <laughs> just call it demo. Demo, demo report. Okay. okay. So. 
You can add expenses directly to the report. People like to do this. You can actually add a mileage to this report as you go. So you, I'll show you here. You you have the report the reports tab. The demo report is here. It's an empty, like a container, and you can add expenses as you go. You can scan receipts. You see the mouse here, scan receipts, enter expenses, track mileage, log time, all that can be done this way too. Unreported expenses, if you want, you can through this list that we just did, and you can just add them to that report. You see what I did? Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it? So that's one of the great things about Falcon Expenses is the, the flexibility in the, all the different ways that you can do things. Because everybody likes to do things a little differently. People want to enter all their expenses in and then later worry about how to organize them. Or their accountant wants them to bucket them by month, or bucket them by mileage, or by time, or etc. So you could just have your client create a bunch of reports. You can create a report from here, right top there. Then you can add expenses. You guys following here? Or is it? Am I moving around too much? No, no, no. We are following. Got it. Okay. So this report, I'm using which I haven't showed you. We're adding odometer expense. So they enter the start and end end reading. Let's say it's 1,000, and then they traveled 100 miles. <coughs> and this is their parking and fuel. Uh, drive to um, client, and it's already in that report. What does that reimbursable bill look like at the bottom? That's if they're billing it back to a client, or it's a reimbursable expense for when you are traveling, like as a a road warrior, like an employee of a company, being reimbursed. Oh, got it. So that would be another report. And all your all your unsubmitted reports are here and all your submitted reports are down here. So Bruce, do you have any other questions about the report? Not yet. <laughs> okay. So we could also if we wanted to track mileage, we could to 2,000, 2,100, 100 miles. We could enter another expense and we can actually predict from here, we can add it to that report and save. Then you would save it. Nice. And you can see these expenses here, they're reported. And from the reports tab, you can See that that expense. Is it storing all this on the phone? Yeah. Oh, on the on the data. Yeah, the data here on the phone. You could back it up. Yeah, at some point, could you clear it off and start all over again, like yearly or something? Yes, if you. So you can delete, when you delete a report, it doesn't, an uh, unsubmitted report, it doesn't delete the expenses after the report. When you delete a submitted report, it deletes the expenses on the report. But you could, you could have, you could just do an entire 2014 mileage expenses. There's so many different ways that you could use it. This report here. You could have a client. You can't spell right now. You could have a client have an entire report just for mileage, and at the end of the year, submit it to you, or the end of the month. May, let's see, September, twenty fourteen. Any questions? Bruce, Dennis? It just seems like that's an awful lot of information getting stored on my phone that I can't get rid of. You can get rid of it. You can delete it. 
Oh, oh. once they submit the report, you can have them delete it. It's no longer on the phone. Have you got so any? Is there, is, there, is there some way to block my client from deleting it before they send it to me? Is there a way of doing that? What was your question? No, you're sorry, there's some um, uh, latency. Is there a way to do what? Is there some way to stop the client or the person using the app from deleting something accidentally before sending it on to a real computer like my Mac? Um, well... Do you like that, Rhonda? See how I got that? Good morning. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. There's a warning in there. <laughs> got it. Everything's going to be... We're going to be moved into backing it up in the cloud. This is just what you see on the phone right now. So it does get backed up to a cloud. You can back it up now. It's just a matter of how you want to back it up. Are you looking for it to like automatically back up everything as it's entered? Yeah, because my concern is if it's saving it to the phone, it's the storage that's being used up on that phone. I and mean, I already pay a yeah, lot. Exactly. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually use much space. Each expense does Yeah. But these would, you can delete it after you submit it, and we will be providing ver like various backup options. <clears throat> I'm assuming the servers are super SAS or whatever. Bruce, you are echoing again. Can you repeat your question? How secure are the servers in the cloud? Because it's not going to the cloud. It's going to somebody's server somewhere. Oh, the iPhone. Yeah. Mm. How secure are they? I mean, they're, the servers are secure. Amazon's cloud. The perimeter is secure. The data would be encrypted in transit. <coughs> Hmm? I'm not getting everything. The data is not on the phone. If the data were in the cloud, it would be secured according to the compliance regulations of the app and the product. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right now, on the phone, that would be how it would be secured. There's plenty of... There's Tons of tools and resources out there to secure data that's in the cloud. But more probably like would be meeting the compliance regulations, socks and etc. What's necessary to secure the data. So it's not like it's before I started talking expenses, I used to work in information security. I used to work on securing data in the cloud. And at the end of the day, like for something to thoroughly be secure, you it's you have to like data on a hard drive has to physically be melted. It's yeah, yeah. it's just how it is. Here, that didn't make anybody feel. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I, I do not. Know anyone else? What do you? What do you? What's the? What do you want secured? Like, how do you want it secure? I'd love that. Um. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Your, your speakers are too loud or they're too close to your mic or something. It's feeding back horribly. Oh, you can hear me? To multiple times. It echoes. Let me see. Hold on. Do you have a pair of headphones? Yeah. yeah. Maybe the, help. It's not so bad we can't understand. Is that, ba is that better? Is that better? Much better. Okay. I think so. Okay. So what I was saying is that the 
the data's on the phone now. When the data goes into the cloud, those nope. servers in that cloud, the perimeter of that cloud is going to be secured. The data that's going to be transmitted is going to be encrypted as it's transmitted. Okay, so it's so yeah. safe. Yeah. Those are the two, yeah. And the network is going to be secured, so those are the main areas. The perimeter, the network security, and the data itself. The data at rest, there's the data in transit and the data at rest. The data at rest isn't typically encrypted, but that's not the perimeter. That's all on the, that's all on the phone, right? The, the, the data that's on the phone, that's the user's hard drive, and that's in control. That's based on how they want to secure their phone. But most of the software that is, the software still has to bring data down locally to the phone in order to use the software. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's the iPhone, it's almost impossible to crack an iPhone. <laughs> it, it, no, it really is. I've had my phone like. <laughs> I'm very impressed with Apple security. Uh, there was an article today, as a matter of fact, I posted about the security on the iPhones. Some of the movie stars got hacked into the cloud, the Apple cloud from the, the iPhone. The cloud, that, yeah, so that's, so you bring up a good point. I, someone was going to bring it up or I'll bring it up. Like that's, the, that article and that, that's the cloud, so that's not the data on the phone, that's actually all the data they're backing up in the cloud. It's not the cloud. It's somebody's server at somebody's office somewhere. Well, <laughs> Apple has their own servers, probably, and, and the servers. Yeah. So Apple encrypts it in transit, and they secure their perimeter. Right. But the cloud that somebody compromised their perimeter and their network security. I believe that's. What, I haven't really read all the details on it, but. Does it have a backdoor auth authentication? The authentic, the app, so there's. I mean, you know what? There's the application level. You're asking about application level authentication. The device itself can be password protected. No, I'm talking about two factor authentication. That, so we, there's no authentication on the app itself. It would be reliant on the device, the device authentication. Right. Okay. The you password know. of the device, yeah. But the data is still, that, the data would still be on the hard drive. Do you see? what I'm saying here. So even if you had two-factor authentication, that data, it doesn't really change the fact that the data itself is on the hard drive. Okay, so the data is not in the cloud then. If it, the, yeah, the, the two-factor authentication is just the unlocking of the actual use of the app, not the data. Right. You see, you, you follow me? Well, I know that I have it on, like, say, for example, on my Zoho account and on my uh, yeah. account where I have to when I sign in online, then they I have to they send me a, a code that I get on my cell phone that I have to enter. In. Right. Yeah, you Google Gmail does that the two factor. You, you that's to access the software. So yeah. the we I and mean, we could add that capability, but right now it's just make it very easy and easily accessible. So in the, this is our first release. So our primary goal was to make it as few barriers as possible for people to start using it. Well, it, it strikes me that the kind of data you're talking about, mileage is probably not that interesting to people. I'm not sure what else you're tracking. I mean, you don't have confidential information, like social numbers, credit card information. There's no credit card information. It's just, it's um, just expense data. data. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a social security number or something like that. Yeah, but you still don't want to give it out if you don't. Yeah. No, but yeah. So we, we so the data there's the data and there's the app. So the data itself is sort of locally on the hard drive. The app itself and it's used, the app is an interface to that data. Whether that data is in the cloud or local on the phone, if the user so Apple has enough. I mean, I, I could provide you a list of, like... No, you're fine. You're fine. I get it. Yeah. Brooke, can I have a question? Sure. Is the sure. data being transferred directly from the phone up to the cloud? Is that how that's working? And then if you need it on your computer, then you download it from the cloud to your computer? 
So everything is local right now. This is our first release. So oh, it's all local. Okay. Yeah. So for your, like, I could send, because I know security is a really big concern, and I, it's definitely, like, a priority here. And the, the data you get very secure with an app if the user password protects their phone. And, yeah, that's it's very secure. Because with Apple, you have the Find My Phone, they can lock it, and you can wipe the hard drive. Like, it's just really, really hard to penetrate an iPhone. Well, when you go towards the cloud, you're getting into a network. Things are different. Because it's local and it's only on this phone, it's really hard for it to be penetrated unless somebody in, gets into the user's phone from the network. You know, do you follow what I'm saying here? Got it. When it creates the CSV report, <clears throat> you, you email it to, or my client will email it to me, right? It's, it's I'll sh yeah, I'll show you this. It's just email, like, I'm going to submit this report here. This report is, hold on. Bye now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we just have a small, it's, okay. I have a question. If you're, if it's, it's just submitted like by email, like it's okay. in the, the form of an attachment. Got it. So yeah. this is like this is using the same email function that you would use to send an email from your phone any other time. So it sends it as a PDF and a CSV. You have the option to choose. You can do either or both. One what, about the, what about the scan, the scans? Are those individual or is that one PDF file? Let me, so this one has receipts, this report. I'm going to resubmit it. And you see. Okay. Each one of those are a separate JPEG probably, right? Yeah. Like, is, it a, a, is it embedded in the email, the photos, or is They're it? They're attached. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have a question. If if the data is on your hard drive, that means you need to have something like Carbonite to be backing it up, right? So we'll be moving it to the cloud. So I know security is always a big topic, and everybody always wants to know. Um, it's it's really I mean, if your hard drive crashes and it's not backed up. You've lost it, right? Yes, that would at the yes. So you would need to well, if you had. Backed up your i. There's you can back up the actual database through the iTunes Connect, but right now, if you did delete the app, everything would be gone at this point, at this time. But we'll be moving it to the cloud, and we'll be securing it <laughs> in the cloud. <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> yes. T tie a rope on that cloud so it doesn't get away. <laughs> Security is always a complex thing. It's like there's no. I mean, you can't ever really secure everything, right? Someone's always trying to compromise. It's just how it is. You're always chasing after something, right? <laughs> the next brownie. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we did enough on security. If we do have any more security questions. Yeah, we, we can move on. <laughs> okay, okay. Email you, Brooke. Um, All right. I do want to move on. Uh, we have like 10 minutes left in the Hangout, and I wanted to move on to pricing. Yes, good. Tell us a little bit about the cost of this app and, and how we can get it. Sure. Let me see here. Oh, and now I'm back. Okay, I figured out. I need to find the Hangout. There we go. <laughs> I couldn't see you guys that whole time. That's why it was really hard. <laughs> okay. Can so, you see me? Um, unshare your screen on the left hand side. There we go. Okay. There, there, now we see you back now. Okay. Okay. So the app right now it's it's um, free to download. You could submit one report for free and then it's three ninety nine to or four ninety nine to upgrade. And I'm that's Unlimited, to submit an unlimited number of reports. Is that a month or is that a one-time fee? It's a one-time fee right now. And then the receipt oh, scans, we have packages you pay per scan. Got it. Yeah. So and how much is it per scan? It's 20 cents a scan. 20 cents? Yes. 
So it sounds super reasonably priced. Yeah. Well, this is the, like I was saying, this is our first major release, so we'll be moving into the SaaS model and into the cloud and doing those, sure. making those steps in that direction. This was sort of um, the first major release to gain validation and uh, see how the market responded, which has been really positive. Nice. Nice. Now, does anybody have any other questions, unsecurity related? <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, I want to apologize if I flustered you. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, I just I, I noticed through your hangouts that was like I did I was researching um, before our hangout. That was a kind of a topic you guys have discussed in the past. I have a question. Have you gotten any kind of IRS feedback, or did you solicit their opinion, or did you do any research as to the kind of things they're looking for, or what they would accept, or? Well, I do know about the seventy-five dollar. Um, anything over seventy-five dollars, you need a receipt image. <laughs> um, and we do research what the requirements are for properly submitting your mileage, um, and what the requirements are for uh, meals and entertainment, and the different types of expenses, which I'm sure you guys know very well of all these different requirements. But we haven't actually spoken to them, but we we are we do aim to meet those requirements to make it easier on everybody. Yeah. I don't know that they actually have a liaison department with software developers, although they, they might they with like TurboTax or something like that. Or, or, they need to. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, they need to. <laughs> this is miles, miles ahead of anything that I've gotten from any of my clients regarding expenses. I'm happy to just get a um, expense report um, Excel sheet. Yeah, Gina, I still use these. <laughs> Wait, what is that? I used to use. I still use. I still have clients that don't know how to turn a computer on, so I have oh, to. Oh wow! <laughs> Those plastic receipt folders that I was. Yep. About. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have a question. So, what do you? What is the time frame for Android? Mm, Android beginning of next year. Okay. Nice you. guess. Buy a, buy a, buy an iPhone, Misha. Really, Bruce? Oh my God. <laughs> the Android, the Android is the, the building isn't necessarily the hard part. We we want to get the uh, in, the stuff ready for the cloud. Yeah. God, the cloud's the priority right now. Right. Yeah, like getting all that infrastructure back there. But Android, it should it really shouldn't be hard. We could just hit go on the Android. They just start coding it and getting it out there and whatnot. It's more um, how we want to, the integration with the accounting software and that stuff. Do you guys have more, your clients more iPhone or Android users? Okay. It's a mix. Probably a mix. more iPhone, but I don't, I don't do bookkeeping, so. Mm -hmm. But I recommend that they use something like this, so. Rhonda, Rhonda your business would use something like this. Did you enjoy, would you, would you? Uh, yeah, I I do uh, like it. It's the only problem for me is is change for my employees trying to use it. <laughs> um, I already know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean they, can barely, they can't get me receipts. Um, I mean I've told them I've threatened them all everything. So I mean it's definitely something to consider. Um, I have like five employees though that would all need it. Um, one is not on iPhone right now. Um, one has yeah. an older iPhone, so it won't work on it. Um, so it's just you know it's just a matter of trying to get the program loaded up for everybody and teach them how to use it. I mean it's got to be simple as you know yeah. <laughs> two year old has to be able to do it. So and I think it meets that requirement. Right. Yeah, they just hate change. That's all. But I actually, I actually already downloaded the app, so <laughs> nice, cool. And, and I've already scanned something, so um, I, twenty I've already, cents. I'm sorry. Twenty cents. I think you get a free one. Oh. Yeah, you get two for free. <laughs> I have, I have promo codes that um, I have promo codes that I could give you guys for free scans. Okay, well that'll be good. 
Put it so in the chat. Yeah, because I'd like to test it out with them. Um, some of my employees are a little smarter than others, so some will get it and some won't. Um, like T-sheets. <laughs> yeah. We, we finally, I think we've accomplished that. Except for the lunch, except for the lunch deduction, I'm still... Yes. That's a T-sheets thing. That's not a. That's not an employee thing. I know. I'm still. Anyways, that's a whole other topic. Um, <laughs> but um, I only have one employee that tracks mileage. Um, so for him, it may that that option may work for him. Uh, all the others are using my own vehicles, so they're not. It's not a separate. And, and if I understood you right, Brooke, they turn that on and they don't ever have to mess with it again, except for to send the boss the report. Yes, yeah, so for each trip they hit start and stop, and if they want to just keep it running, they can, and it will keep track of all the mileage from when between the start and stop. Um, Brooke, I'm getting ready to download that app. Um, is it the there's two that says one says Falcon Express Auto Mileage Tracking, and the other one that says Falcon Expenses Inc. Either will work. Either I downloaded one. the Inc. one, and it works perfect. Okay. Well, they're both they both go to the same app. Apple just <laughs> caches. Apple will continually cache the the little tagline that you use. If you keep changing it, it'll never go away. Oh, there. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> did you not think I would download that? <laughs> I didn't know it would be this fast. <laughs> I don't. I don't wait. Everybody should download the app. I'm, I'm waiting for the I, I'm waiting for six to come out before I get an iPhone. I'm sorry, I have to wait until next year. Uh, I'm Android. Oh, you're a Droid. I'm Droid. I really oh. want to put it on the Droid. I, I feel left out. But get an iPhone. <laughs> I have an Android. I I got an iPhone and couldn't work it. So what are the biggest points of where like we could improve to help meet your needs better? I guess is like that Falcon expenses. Like like Dennis suggested, and there are apps out there that do track the mileage and provide you with what they're calling an IRS approved report. Oh, okay, okay. And if you want the specs to those, I have them. Oh yeah, do please send email them to me. <laughs> I'm actually looking for a mileage tracker for a client of mine who's an architect. Uh, a good one. Yeah, but she's an architectural firm. I don't need the time tracker because she's all set with that. But the expense piece, where she, for cash only, um, when she, they do parking and stuff like that, that they need to, you know, little receipts, um, the expense piece would work for them as well. But I don't know. She has six employees, and I don't know. And they do a lot of stuff in Canada. And blah, blah, blah. How much is the app again, just to do the mileage? Um, four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. There you go. One so you time. Can't afford not to. Yeah. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. be moving into a, a SaaS model. We definitely need to get where it's a monthly fee. I mean, Actually, you spend that on Starbucks alone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to. We have to move in that direction. So you you will have to move in that direction, Brooke. Yeah. Right. Brooke, so. I'm on this uh, app right now. So they don't ask for like uh, an email and a password. This is not a, something that you sign on to like that. No, our goal in the beginning, because this is our first major release, was to create the lowest barrier to entry to use. Okay. So people are downloading it. We wanted to just let them use it because that's kind of was the first part is getting people to use it so we'll be adding a, a account management um, we could do two-factor authentication if that's necessary and cloud and uh, Android all those things will come in the future along with a SaaS model of recurring revenue I have a question Sure. Uh, I was just thinking, I've got a client that could use it, it's a tree service, and there's a lot of guys, and they, it just drives us crazy, they go out and they buy gas and that, and the problem is, we download it from the bank, but we have no clue what vehicle or anything like that is, yeah. because of your notes thing, it might work really well. Um, what was I going to ask? You could use the tag feature to track the vehicle, so you could have them categorize it as transportation and then they can create custom tags for their vehicles. Yeah. So how do you then get it from the iPhone to wherever, like Email. to a piece of paper? 
you, or eight hours or something, yeah. Yeah, so then what, so they enter the expense on the iPhone and then... So they just then email it to somebody. They put it into a report. You can add expenses to a report and then they would email it to you and you'll get an export and you can then sort by vehicle. Right. Well, and I will send you yeah. an email and I'm going to ask for some codes to be sent to um, calarbor.com. Yeah. I, 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 Regina, I know you're trying to end this because it's time. Well, yeah. actually, what I'm doing is copy and pasting everybody's email address. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, Brooke, you had a really cool app where you were showing us the phone, and it almost actually looked like it was tied to your phone on your computer. Oh, that was what I was doing the demo. It was um. What is that? That otherwise, I, how I would have to do this. <laughs> No. What? So what? How did you? How did do you that? get it to show? What is the app? What is the app Ref that you it's use? It's called Reflector. 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 Yes. Holy cows! I got a whole thing of video sticks. Bruce is on fire. <laughs> and if you awesome. want, we can train because training is um. That's also part of the roadmap is online training. Um, we haven't decided if we're going to offer do in person or just online yet, but or both um, will be training. So for now, like I, I mean, we'd be happy to train your clients if you can. So we start pimping this out. Do we get money kickbacks? <laughs> That's also <laughs> something we thought about too. Right? They're researching uh, <laughs> one time fee. Come on, Bruce. <laughs> Come on. But they're gonna, but they're gonna change from the one time fee to a monthly thingy and. I mean, if I'm gonna, you know, yeah, they want to make says if I'm gonna be pimping for somebody, I'm not, <laughs> show me the money, or at least a discount or something. Yeah. If you guys want me to give, if you want to put your clients on a call and I can, we it. can do a training and I could train them. Yeah. Air squirrels, huh? And I'll send you promo codes. That we can do the training and. This would probably really help us in developing the training curriculum and then um, sure. um, everything I else. I love my yeah. clients. Did everybody put their email address over in chat for me to come? Well, I have this in a log. Well, I'm actually creating one for she, you. She's okay, getting okay. you one, Brooke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And, and, and feel free to send me all your feedback or questions or anything. Sure. Yeah. The more oh, they even better. have a reflector for Android. Look at that. <laughs> so you can <laughs> the reflector is really helpful. So when we give demos, um, well, we use a cord. It connects to TV. I have clients that make apps, and I've never seen something that worked real time like that. That was slick. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, you got clients that create apps. I've been asking oh, yeah. and asking and asking. Okay, how often am I on? Media, really? This was before you went um, MIA. <laughs> oh, this was man. before you went into hiding in the... Um, I didn't go into hiding. I went into super work. I'm sorry. No, no. You went into the witness protection program. <laughs> but I do need... Uh, yeah, I definitely want to... Hey, any other questions? You guys see I'm this sorry. being useful for your um, your clients and your companies? Absolutely. Yeah, I, have, I, have, I, have, I think this might be the solution I'm looking for. Well, that minus the time. You don't have to use all of them, right? Mm -mm, no, you can use whatever. That's why. So the vision is fully mobile and universal. So um, you can time tracking, mileage tracking, um, or a combination, or receipt scanning. It could be. In, in a contractor that needs to just submit it to their accountant once a month, it could be mm -hmm. somebody submitting it to their manager, their boss. It could be, you know, person. Yeah, there's so many different ways to use it. So I have a question. So what about doing um, company plans? So you you're getting it and you're getting it for multiple employees. Would you have something like that as opposed to a having group rate? each person? Yeah, like a group rate for. So my client has six. It's two two partners and four employees, and all of them would use it. I think the company would pay for everybody, and it would be all under that company. So that yeah, would be bucks. the next phase. Five of that. Well, six times five is thirty dollars. Now, um, Brooke, 
Mm -hmm. If people sign up now, are they guaranteed that they won't have to switch to a monthly rate down the road? Or <laughs> institute the monthly rate would then? I think that's the time to do a group rate, personally. So the when these are things we're, we're going to go towards a monthly rate. These are things we're working on. Um, maybe a discount. I don't know. That still hasn't been developed yet, Linda. We yeah. have, we have, we have um, the pricing. Like we have brainstormed and mapped out some of these things, but we'll be moving into a SaaS model. Whether we offer or grandfather in the previous customers, that's a possibility. We could offer a, something. You should. There. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> everybody that's watching, that has these, are, these are good questions. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, it, it has to be only the iPhone people. So no, there'll be an Android, but right now it's just the iPhone. Right. Hmm. Okay. Now, well, there'll probably be there'll also be a web portion, but but you'll be always be able to do everything on the phone that you can do on the web. Right. That's good. Me, I would like to. I would like to see it tied to the web, so when my employees are entering data, it goes to the web, and I can see it in real time. Yeah, that that's yeah. So for the accountant, they'll have access. That's some of the things we've spoken with other bookkeepers and accountants, and that's what they like. The idea that where would be, that would be great. So we as accountants yeah. sign up. What's that? For an, we as accountants sign up for the whatever account online and then our clients will link to us put us in as their accountant yep. they send it it goes to this account and we can then pull it as we need it if they lose then they won't lose their data because it's coming automatically and yep. hitting our account yeah that's okay. all they'd be the same as like a relationship as a with a manager to an employee we do an accountant to their client okay yeah nice so nice. then we get a special account. Yeah, you have your own way to look and review it okay. and make changes. And then we can add as many clients as we want to that account who's using. Okay. Nice. Well, this is a great hangout today. Thank you very much, Brooke, for coming on and talking to us. Thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, um, See me, I will give you Brooke's email address, and Brooke, I will give you everyone's email addresses. Um, I'll email that to you. I've just put it all on a little word pad. Perfect. So I'll Great. get that information to you, and you can get out the promo codes to everyone. Okay, thank you. Oh. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, thank you for all your questions, and we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.